Hello, this is the Ramblings of an Undisciplined Mind podcast for Saturday, December 19th, 2015. So, we went out this morning and we watched uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens. And uh, I'm going to talk about it. So, there are going to be spoilers here. So, if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want to be spoiled, then don't listen to this right now. Listen to it later if you're interested in my my thoughts on it. Because um, I am going to discuss some of the some of the, the big things that happen. Uh, all right. So I thought it was a really good movie. It it it, it follows the. I shouldn't say follows. It hits a lot of the same major plots. In, in, in a way, you could almost say it's it's a retelling of A New Hope. Uh, you got a very similar kind of kind of story going on there. Only it's happening in the you know in the post Return of the Jedi world. Um, there's a lot that they don't explain between what has happened. Uh, between this movie and the end of Return of the Jedi. Um, and that's something, I, I, I don't know if they're going to do that at some point later, um, or if that's just going to be kind of always a mystery, or, or how they think they're going to handle that. Uh, so I'm going to be interested to, to, uh, to see how that goes. You know, you start off on a desert planet, and you've got this guy that is getting uh, a map that's leading to Luke Skywalker, because Luke Skywalker is has disappeared. He has gone away, um, and they're looking for him, which is kind of interesting. You know, I, I'd heard that there was a a A theory going around, whatever that you know, Luke would only appear at the end. That he really wasn't going to have you know, Mark Hamill wasn't going to really have a big role in this one, um, but he was going to be kind of missing until the very end. Um, and that as soon as I I was reading the crawl and I was talking about how oh they're trying to find Luke and 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 General Leah Organa has sent. Uh, their best pilot to try to find to get this map to Luke, and and, and, and all the stuff. I knew that okay, so we probably aren't going to be seeing a ton of Luke. If yeah, I figured we'd see him, but we obviously weren't going to see um, you know a, a whole lot, a whole lot there. So. I, I liked so the main character is this woman named Ray, and 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 I did like her. Uh, she's pretty no nonsense, and she's she's hoping against hope. She got left on this desert planet that's not Tatooine, but it looks a lot like Tatooine. There are inexplicably uh, a lot of. Imperial Star Destroyers and TIE Fighters and whatever that have crash landed on this planet. They never really explain why that is. If this is like due to some war that happened after the fall of the Emperor or what, but you know, she does her, you know, her got kind of this. I don't really want to say post-apocalyptic, but she's a scavenger and she's one of many, and that's how they get their rations. As they go into these wrecks and they look for for useful parts and they bring them back and and they get paid in rations based upon um you know, what it is that they brought back and and you know, she got abandoned there by her parents when she was just a little girl and she's waiting for them to return and she's hoping for them to return we see at the very beginning that we've got this one uh stormtrooper who who doesn't want to kill these villagers where Max von Sydow lived after the um, the pilot uh, tried to escape but ended up getting captured and 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 they decided to kill all the rest of the vi- villagers and this and this one 
Stormtrooper doesn't want to do it. And he's the other main character. His his name is Finn. He's actually they they said very clearly that he wasn't a clone because he remembered his he, well, you know, the story is is he got stolen as a baby. But his his designation was FN and then a big long number. So um this pilot uh, later on when he's breaking out the pilot pilot nicknames him Finn, which seems fine. At the beginning there, I'm just like, this guy is like sweaty all the time. You know, he's sweaty. He was sweaty on the desert planet, which was fine. Whose name I, I forget. It started with a D. Um, and then he was sweaty on the, on the Star Destroyer. So he's part of this faction called the New Order that is basically the Empire. Um, we get this guy whose name just now escapes me. Maybe I should look it up on my phone. Eh, it's not here. Uh, who's basically Darth Vader, and we find out later that's Han Solo and, and Leia's son. And he's... He's kind of channeling his grandfather there. He wants to be the next Darth Vader. Um, and, and I could kind of understand that, you know, because I, I feel like I have a connection to my, to my uh, long-past grandfather, uh, and in that he was a writer, and I'm a writer. Yeah, so I can kind of, I can kind of get the cross generational, um, even though they never met. Uh, you know, the attraction there. So some of the things that I liked about it. First of all, it 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 felt you know from, from stylistically, obviously musically, because John Williams did the thing, did the score. It felt very much like a Star Wars film. Um, it had some, it had some humor that was, that was good. Uh, and it wasn't over the top. My, my, my fear for BB-8 was, and BB-8, if you have, if you don't know who that is, that's the little spherical droid that's been in a lot of advertisements and things. And you can buy BB-8 t-shirts and models and, and what have you. Uh, my fear for him was that they were going to, they were going to over cutesyify him and make him the comic relief. And and they didn't. Yeah, he's a droid. He's 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 been given this star chart that's got uh, uh, Luke's location, and he's trying to complete his mission. So you know that kind of feels like R two D two at the beginning of uh, A New Hope. Um, and, and, and so that was nice. That he you know he wasn't he wasn't going to be this episode this episode's. Judge R. Banks, you know, he's not trying to be um, trying to be comic relief uh, in really any way, shape, or form. He's just trying to complete his mission. They did have some funny bits there, you know. There was one part where the the New Order has shown up and um, Finn and Ray are, are running from uh, these explosions that are happening behind them, and they're heading toward a ship, and you, the, the camera's in front of them, and they're running towards you, and, and they, they flip to, to look behind them, and, and they're running toward this ship, and, and Finn asks Ray, why don't, we, why don't we go use this ship? And he points to some ship that's off to their right, and we can't see it. It's off, off screen. And, and she's like, no, that one's garbage. This, one, this one's the better ship. And as they're running toward it, of course, uh, a... a um, a TIE fighter, and they and they look like TIE fighters. They sound like TIE fighters. The only difference is they're black instead of gray. Um, but they're TIE fighters. So this new order has obviously inherited all of the tech of the Empire. Excuse me, I needed this. Sip a drink. So they've inherited all the tech of the Empire. So anyway, so they shoot up this ship, and then the can't, and so they're like, all right, well, we'll take the garbage ship because it's the only option available. And you turn, and they're kind of half hidden under a tarp. The camera turns as they're running toward it, and it's the Millennium Falcon. Um, so that was cool. You know, most of the big reveals as far as the existing characters um, were really, really quite cool. Um and the crowd that we were with applauded for most of them. Uh, so when when Han and Chewie showed up, and, and the funny thing is, is that scene, you, you, the way they did the scene, you're expecting stormtroopers to come walking in through the Millennium Falcon's door, and they're hiding. 
uh, and but it's Han and Chewie, and and then you get that Chewie were home line that we've seen on the trailers. But it, it was just it was just cool because you're really expecting that it's going to be stormtroopers coming through and it's Han and Chewie, and and that was that was really well done there. And you know, so people la clap when they came in, um, when Leia got shown, when three PO got shown. 3PO was a, was a little funny. I mean, he's always been some comic relief, you know. Right in the middle of Leia and, you know, the big scene where Leia and Han are, are meeting for the first time that we've seen, you know. They've obviously kind of, you know, they've had a son together, so they had a relationship, but it seems like they've kind of fallen apart. And so this is the first time they've seen each other in a while. And, you know, of course, it's a big scene for us because it's, it's the first time we're seeing them together since Jedi, and 3PO sticks his face in there, oh, Han Solo, how are you? You may not recognize me because I have a red arm. His left arm, for some reason, was red. Replacement parts, I guess. Uh, and, and But then even 3PO kind of realizes, that, oh, I'm kind of breaking into the scene, and he <laughs> breaks away. So that was funny. That was a funny bit. What were some other funny bits that made me laugh? I don't know. Uh, you know, so 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 there were a lot there, but there was a lot of of really good stuff there. One, of the, I enjoyed Ray because you know they, you know, she's a woman. They they made her a woman that could stand on her own, but she's just, but she's not tough as nails, you know. She's, but but at the same time, she really doesn't need a ton of help. And uh, so, like a, a good example of this was was short when when Finn first saw her. Um, she had BB-8, she'd run into BB-8, and BB-8 was with her, and these guys decided they, or they'd been sent by the, the kind of the foreman of this entire scavenger community to, to, uh, to, to steal BB-8 from her, and so these two guys accosted her, and she's got like this staff weapon that she carries with her all the time, and she is fighting these two guys and Finn kind of sees her from a distance and, 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 you know, for whatever reason, apparently thinks he has to help. Um, and, and he's, he's running toward her, but she takes them both out. And, you know, so she obviously didn't need his help. And then, BB-8 noticed Finn, and Finn was wearing a jacket that belonged to that hot fighter pilot who, who was was BB-8's owner, um, and and BB-8 tries to you know tells tells uh, Ray that oh you know he stole that jacket from my owner, and so then she's running toward him and he's running from her, so it was kind of cool. But you know we had some they had some tender moments later on. And you know, so it was nice. It was it was a nice juxtaposition because she she can fight for herself, uh, and she doesn't on, in several places, but she doesn't. Uh, you know, she, they didn't go hundred percent to the to the hard line. You know, she's she's just a hard woman, and you know, there she never shows any tenderness, any sadness. Uh, they didn't go that way, and that was good. I I, I thought that was really good. Um, I, I'll tell you, the Millennium Falcon took a beating <laughs> in this thing. It was some really cool flying sequences, but like when she was first trying to get it off the ground, man, she's like running into stuff and and and, and whatnot. And, it's like, ooh, and then later on, it uh, it, uh, it it crash landed on this planet that was kind of like the new Death Star, but instead of being uh, the size of a small moon, it is now planet sized, literally. Uh, I assume they built it into a, into a planet because this planet had like trees and weather and stuff. So I think they probably took a planet and turned it into the Star Killer, as they called it. And it wasn't enough now to just kill a planet. It basically allows you to suck all the energy from a sun and use that to kill the entire solar system. So that was kind of neat. Let's see. So what are some other good things to call out? Um... We we got all the main major characters that we expected to get in this thing. Uh, we've got you know we got Han and we got Han and Leia. We got a little bit of Luke at the end. We got three PO. We got R two, but he was he was almost like 
like um, like Luke. So when when they um, when we first encounter encounter R two, he's he's in like power save mode, and he's basically gone in the power save mode since since Luke disappeared, and, and he very rarely comes out of it. But of course the the question is because we find out that BB 8s map is just kind of a it's a it's a it's incomplete. It's just a small section. So that is not enough to tell you where Luke is. They need to have that piece inserted into the whole map as a whole. And, and BB-8's wondering if uh, if R2-D2 has it. Turns out he does, but it's not until the end when he just inexplicably wakes up and says, you know, and either BB-8 asks him or whatever. But, you know, all of a sudden he's displaying the map of the universe. It's just got this little chunk out of it. It's, you know, just where, where BB-8's map. Fit. So, I mean, that just seemed a little weird to me he, he, that he would. I mean, he didn't go in the power power down mode when when Obi Wan um, stopped using him after the prequels. I, I I don't know. That's that seemed a little too emotional for me, really, for a droid. So, you know, we really didn't get to see much of R2 at all. We didn't see a ton of 3PO either, for that matter. And that was probably okay. I mean, BB-8 was obviously the droid star um, for this one. Um, so, you know, th th there's a lot they didn't, they didn't explain as regarding the political landscape. And that's something, as I mentioned, I mentioned this briefly earlier, but it's something I would, I would like to know. So, I, I would like more explanation on that because you know so here we are we are within a generation say of when of when uh, the, the events of Jedi happen because you know Luke and Leia are still alive and Luke, and Han's still alive but you know once again Leia is leading a resistance because the new order is kind of taking over, and, and it is overshadowing the new republic. It is taking, you know, they, they, they're in the course of the movie. They are, they are blowing away the uh, last vestiges of this new republic. And it's like, how do you let that happen within your lifetime? You just got done. You just got rid of the old republic. How is it that the new republic doesn't have all of the all of the empire's tech? And if you did, how did you let this new order, and there's this new supreme ruler um, that we get to see several times in holographic form, um, you know, that, that, that somehow managed to, to, you know, to get empire levels of all of these Star Destroyers and things and build this massive Star Killer how does that happen? I, I really don't. I really don't understand that. How you know? Yeah, yeah. If it's something where, well, you know, there was a vacuum, so they. I don't know. But to me, that that seems a little, a little far fetched. Um, you know, unless it was just one of these things where where this, you know, the guy that's the supreme ruler now, he was just in a position where he could grab up. He could he could grab up a lot of this tech and maybe you know he's been slowly building what the new republic's been trying to slowly build. But I mean they didn't. I mean it wouldn't take much really. You know uh, you could, you could add a little throwaway line that Leah says you know oh, we've been trying to we've been we've been trying to wrest control from this new order ever since the 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 initial chaos of the empire falling. You know. They wouldn't take take a ton to kind of explain that a little bit, and I, I don't think they did that. Um, let's see. I talked about the R two thing. Um, what else? There were some of the things that I thought you know, were good, but they didn't they didn't necessarily. They had this. They did. They did hit. Um, hark back to. Some of the some of the um, settings of previous films. So obviously, the desert planet at the beginning was supposed to make you think of Tatooine, even though it wasn't Tatooine. 
there was this one planet that was very lush and had a lot of rivers and lakes. And that reminded me a bit of kind of the, um, some of the areas in in Naboo, you know, as, as somebody said, uh, Space Italy, when I was listening to the Wookie Rookie podcast and they were talking about that, I think they called it Space Italy because it's actually filmed in Italy uh, for that. You know, so they hearkened back to some, and, and there was a, a planet where the Republic was that I think is supposed to be, we saw very, very briefly before it got blown to bits. Um, that was supposed to be like, you know, the new Coruscant um, going on there. You know, so that was, that, that was good. You know, of course, you know, th one of the biggest things was, was the guy who played the bad guy whose, whose face I can't, whose name I can't recall right now. And he wore a mask. And sometimes, sometimes it was almost like Bane uh, on The Dark Knight Rises, where he was a little tough to to understand. You know, I don't understand. I don't really get this, because you know, we had three movies plus a little bit where we had James Earl Jones's voice um, for Darth Vader. They gave it a little echo, so it sounded like it was in a mask. It was 100% perfectly legible every single time. But yet, the modern movie makers can't seem to be able to get this mask effect right to where they're giving you the impression, yeah, he's talking through a mask, but yet not not make it so muffled that you can't understand it. He does take the mask off several times, so apparently he's just wearing the mask like an homage to his grandfather, Darth uh, Vader. So, because you know, at one point he takes it off. Um, so in, in in the course of this, and actually while uh, the bad guy is interrogating uh, Ray because she's seen the map, so he wants, he's, he's trying to pull it from her brain using his force powers. And she is, she kind of, um, she, she, discovers that she's got force powers too uh, during the course of that interrogation and she can resist him and she can even you know read his mind a little bit and and see what his motivations are uh, and there's this one scene where he's trying to read her mind and she's trying to fight it where I felt like it was a long time where you know, they had some sort of sound effect and he's got his hand out and it's shaking a little bit and she's just kind of glaring back at him. Obviously, he's supposed to be mentally blocking him. And there's just this couple, three minutes where they don't speak. There's not really much movement other than the shaking of his hand. I mean, they flipped the, the angle a couple times between her and him. There's really not any music. They've got some weird sound effect going on, but it's just like, okay, anytime you want to stop this. They finally did, but it's just kind of like, mm, all right, that was kind of weird. And then, of course, the biggest thing that happened, which I am so thankful that I did not get spoiled on this. And once again, if you ignored my spoiler warning at the beginning and you haven't seen it yet and you're listening to this anyway, this is major spoiler I'm going to talk about now. This is, you know... Vader being Luke's father level spoiler that I'm going to talk about now. Um, I did not see the death of Han coming for very long. Um, you know, he tried to go and 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 reach out to his son while they're on this mission to to destroy the Star Killer at the end there, and I wasn't quite sure what was going to come of it. Um, we'd already seen that. That that Han's son here, he's been fighting. He can feel his good side, uh, and and he's fighting it. He wants to be on the dark side. He's been thoroughly turned. And he wants to be on the dark side, but but you know he does feel the light side, and is and a part of him is attracted to the light side, and so he's trying to go there, or he's he's fighting going there, and. And, you know, one of the things Leah had asked Han is, you know, if you see our son, bring him home. There's good in him yet. I can feel it. And 
and she tries to do that. Uh, and so, so Han, there's this moment where, where Han can approach his son, even though he's not supposed to be where he's at. And, you know, they talk and they have this really nice scene. And, and the son says, I'm, I need to, I need to get rid of this pain of resisting the light side. And, you know, he says, will you help me to Han? And Han says, I'll do anything. And at that moment, I knew Han was going to die. And uh, he did. And, you know, and so that brings up one of the things that, one of the things that I, I, I was, uh, another missing piece of information that I, I, I kind of wanted to, to say about, you know, Leia is supposed to be able to, to use the Force as well as Darth Vader's child. Uh, you know, you know, Luke basically said that that the Force runs strong in his family. His sister has it. You know, blah blah blah. Um, at the end of Jedi, you know, in Jedi, there, but we see next to nothing from Leia as far as that she has Force powers, that she's tried to cultivate Force powers, that she's in any way tried to go down the path of a Jedi. There's next to nothing. You've got that one line where she's telling Han, you know, bring our son home. There's still good in him. I feel it. And then when Han dies, she senses a disturbance in the force. She doesn't say that, but you can see she's, she's struck and she's sitting down and she's sad and, and nobody has to tell her what's, what's happened. She knows what's happened. You know, so, so there's a little bit of a connection there, but I, you know, once again, I like more backstory on that. Um, all we really know about what was happening with the Jedi was, was that you know Luke was trying to train up the next generation of Jedi, but one student who's you know Han and Leia's son, who's the one that uh, is is working with the New Order, uh, went bad, and, and I don't know if he, I don't remember if they said he killed, I think he killed some of the students. I don't know if he ki killed all the students. Um, and after that, Luke was like, I'm done. And he went into hiding at that point. So, yeah, I'd like some more of that. You know, they, they didn't give us any indication as far as as far as far uh, Ray's parentage. You know, where does she get the Force from? I don't know if they're going to have her be like she's coming from, um, you know, is she like Luke's daughter? It's hard to tell what Luke's reaction to her is because he's just, at the very end, she shows up and she's where he's at and she's trying to hand him his old lightsaber. I'll talk about that in a second. This is going to be a long one. Sorry. It's Star Wars. Um, and he's just kind of staring at her a little bit incredulously, so it's tough to tell. It, this, this lightsaber pops up and it's Luke's lightsaber and it's Vader's lightsaber. They say it's, it's, it's the one they both used. Which means that it's the one Luke got from Obi-Wan. Which means it was the one that was in his hand when his hand got cut off in Empire. And my daughter was like, well, how the heck did they get that? You know, and you know, I, I got to assume that, like, it got sucked into some, you know, waste receptacle thing in Cloud City there. Maybe somebody, oh, a lightsaber and... and figured it out although you know based on what we saw in the movie it should have been it should have been sucked down one of those tubes like Luke was and then it should have been sent down into the clouds and it should be gone so it's going to be interesting to see if they're going to give us a bit more uh, information in the next movie about the um, providence of that particular relic um, you know there was a light uh, a couple lightsaber battles with um, the new guy Ren it's Ren somebody I think. Ah, I wish I brought my phone. I could look it up. Um, Finn had had a lightsaber fight. And, and there's no indication that he has the force at all. But he has this lightsaber fight. And he's never used... You know, he's using Luke's lightsaber. And he's never had a... Ha had any training with this weapon. And it goes on for a bit before you know the bad guy wins. And I thought, you know, in reality, that would probably be like a two-second fight. It shouldn't take that long for somebody who A, has the force, and B, has been training in that weapon to take down somebody who's neither of those two things. 
you have a longer fight between the bad guy and Ray, and you know, so she's using the force and he's using the force, but she's kind of learning as she goes. But yeah, it's it's a good it's a good uh, it, it was a good fight and it was a believable fight. I think more so than the one with Finn, because to me, I'm just like this is. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a huge fight. It's not like it went on for five minutes. It probably went on for two or three. To me, it was just it was much too long for somebody who was unaccustomed to the weapon didn't have the force helping them out as far as we know so so yeah those are my thoughts on 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 the movie i enjoyed it uh i would like to see it again while it's in the theater um and watch it again and, and get more of the details and yeah and and uh, really you know totally immerse myself in it maybe there's you know, probably some nuances i missed um so I, I definitely want to go see it again, um, and and I think J.J. Abrams did good. Um, you know, I I enjoyed his Star Trek reboots. There are problems with those, you know. So they're 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 okay. You know, they're okay. They're not the great Star Trek that we've had in the past upon occasion, uh, like Star Trek Four and Star Trek Generations and some of the other ones that were great Star Trek, you know. His Star Trek, were they were okay, they were fun. I think it, he, he brought together a good cast, but they weren't great Star Trek. Um, this was great Star Wars, I think. I think. Uh, I really do. I think it's going to stand up well. Uh, it's certainly much, much, much better than the prequels. Uh, and every movie's, you know, the stuff I'm bringing up that either, you know, maybe they're going to explain it at a future date, or maybe it's kind of wanted to, dive you into this universe, you know, many years later. Uh, and maybe there'll be comic books or books or something that'll kind of bridge that gap and tell, give me, you know, tell me some of these things I want to know. And yeah, that's fine too. That's fine too. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I think he hit, it, hit this one out of the park. Uh, he didn't totally write the story, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I think this worked out really well. Well, I am over half an hour which uh, shouldn't be a surprise to me, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to let this go for today. I will be back on Monday, and I will be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.